Alrighty, y'all. How you going? We are looking at 30 juicy facts about the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, I think this one's going to be pretty cool. This has been suggested a couple times, and most recently on Discord from T Girl 009. Uh, so I do appreciate that. Uh, this is going to be cool because you know, obviously, the big players uh, that I know of, you know, or that I'm fond of. Uh, of course, would be Australia, New Zealand, right? I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, but there's, I think, a lot more than meets the eye with the Southern Hemisphere. And it's just one of those things that, at least from my point of view in the U.S., like, you just don't hear a lot about the Southern Hemisphere very much, right? It's kind of weird. I know a majority of the population lives in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, I do know that right off the bat. But yeah, it's. I think a lot of these are going to be surprising to me and, and new. This comes to us from the channel called The Geography Bible. It'll be linked in the description down below so you can watch this whole video uninterrupted. And of course, browse their channel. Let's take a look at this. The Southern Hemisphere contains all or parts of five continents. That's Antarctica, Australia, about 90% of South America, one third of Africa, and several islands off the continental mainland of Asia. Number two. So, I mean, yeah, it's got a lot of landmass. Africa, one third of Africa, and several islands off the continental mainland of Asia. Number two. The Southern Hemisphere is home to four oceans, the Indian, yeah. South Atlantic, Southern, and Pacific. The Pacific is the world's largest ocean, with around half of it being located in the Southern Hemisphere, which coincidentally is about roughly the same size as the Atlantic. Number three. The Southern Hemisphere's surface is around 81% water, wow. compared to 60% water in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, okay. The Southern Hemisphere contains around 33% of Earth's land. Number four. So I guess that's less than I thought. It's still a lot, but there's a lot of water going on, and it's only a third of Earth's land. So Northern Hemisphere really coming at you with a lot of land then, okay. Compared, Around 850 million people live in the Southern Hemisphere. This is a uh, beautiful shot, by the way. Striking looking city. Really wicked arena down here. And then really uh majestic mountains in the back I, I don't know where that is but it's pretty cool yeah so that is around 10 percent of all that's, humans that's existing melbourne in a flinders third street of baby land, making it much more sparsely populated than the north number five there are a total of 32 countries in the southern hemisphere this does include those who stretch into the north as well Wow. Number six. By urban area, Jakarta is the most populated city in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, with yeah. I was actually, if we're talking Southern Hemisphere, I was going to say somewhere in Brazil or I, I guess like Sydney would be up there, right? But I, I totally forgot, like, Jakarta is huge. The That's population true. of nearly 34 million, which in <sighs> fact ranks it as the second most populated wow. on Earth. Jakarta yeah. is also one of only two Asian capitals located in the south. The other is Dili of East Timor. Number seven, the most populated country in the Southern Hemisphere would be Indonesia, whose population right. is around a quarter of a billion. However, as Indonesia stretches across both hemispheres, the most populated country that is solely found in the Southern Hemisphere is Tanzania at around 60 oh, million. Wow. Tanzania is the 23rd most populated country on Earth. Number eight. Tanzania. Wow. So we're only, what, seven or eight facts into this? And this is just telling me that um, I don't know shit about the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> uh, so this is a good one. This is a great season. I mean, I'm really learning a lot because, as I said in the beginning, I, I don't know. We just, I guess just there's so much going on in the Northern Hemisphere, right? That uh, a lot of the media and a lot of what you're, I guess, like, exposed to and think about really just isn't in the southern hemisphere uh for the most part Eight. right it's weird australia is the most developed country in the southern hemisphere according to the human development index it has a score of now i would have guessed that that's not surprising so uh good for you australia 0 0.951 the fifth highest on earth fifth highest the on next earth. most developed Damn. country would be chile which ranks 42nd in the wow. world with a score of 0 0.855 Number so nine. Australia, like, pulling the weight for, like, uh, super developed countries in that southern hemisphere then Speaking by quite of a bit. Australia, it is also the largest country by land size that is found solely in the southern hemisphere at around 7.7 .7 million kilometers squared. Right, because Brazil is huge, actually bigger, right? But they have a little bit that goes over the equator, It is though. the sixth largest country on Earth. 
The four largest countries are found solely in the Northern Hemisphere, and then fifth place Brazil stretches mm. across both hemispheres. Number right. 10. The most widespread religions in the Southern Hemisphere are Christianity in South America, Southern Africa and Australia slash New Zealand, followed by Islam in most of the islands of Indonesia and in parts of Southeastern Africa, and Hinduism, which is mostly concentrated on the island of Bali and neighbouring islands. Number 11. Interesting. Sydney is the most important global financial city in the Southern Hemisphere, ranking oh, okay. 13th overall. This means that the top 12, and in fact top 20 cities minus Sydney, are all in the north for the highest ranking financial centres. Number 12. Cyclones and tropical storms spin clockwise in the Southern Hemisphere. That's as opposed to anti-clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, wow. That is weird. This is due to the Coriolis effect. Number 13. The largest economy in the Southern Anti-clockwise. I've heard that before. That is that is funny. <laughs> the hemisphere belongs to Brazil. Again, if we exclude Brazil, who stretches across both hemispheres, mm. then it would be Australia, with okay. a GDP of around 1.7 trillion US dollars. Number 14. At just shy of 7,000 meters tall, Aconcagua is the tallest mountain in the Southern Hemisphere. The you know, I love my mountains, right? I love mountains. That's in uh, Argentina, is I believe. found in Argentina's west yeah. coast, not too far from the border with Chile. Now this mountain is tall, but what's absolutely mind-blowing is Jeez. that it doesn't even rank in the top 100 tallest mountains on Earth. Number 15. Wow, I didn't know that. The tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere so belongs to the top 100 are all in the north? To Indonesia. The Autograph Tower in Jakarta stands 383 meters tall. The building officially opened towards the end of 2022, meaning it stole... Oh, so that's like new. ...a crown from Auckland Sky Tower, which is 55 meters shorter. Even... Wow, Auckland used to have it. No kidding. That thing is pretty cool. You know, I do remember seeing this before, of course, in pictures in Auckland. I didn't realize that up until, I guess, last year, this was the tallest building in the south, the southern hemisphere. Um, it looks really neat, though. Right? I, aesthetic, I'm going to give it to that still. But this is pretty cool. It's brand new, right? Maybe if it was taken, like, Maybe if it was a better picture. That's like so, it's almost like foggy and cloudy. The Southern Hemisphere belongs to Indonesia. Picture, but, uh, the Autograph Tower in Jakarta stands 383 meters tall. The building officially opened towards the end of 2022, meaning it stole a crown from Auckland's Sky Tower, which is 55 meters shorter. Even though it is the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere, it only picture. ranks 51st in the world. Wow. Out of the 91 tallest buildings on Earth, this is the only building to feature from the South. Number Jeez, 16. So another totally weird, like, s the ratio, right? Wow, all the extremes are usually in the North then. The longest river that is found solely in the Southern so Hemisphere weird. is the Paraná a river that runs through Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina for some 4,880 kilometers long. This makes it the longest in the Southern Hemisphere and the eighth longest on Earth. Number 17. Excluding Antarctica, the UK is technically home to the most southern territory on Earth. As its overseas mm. territory, the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands sits 59 degrees south, excluding- Damn, I have never even heard of those South Sandwich Islands in South Georgia? What? Doing this, however, Chile will be awarded as the country with the most southern tip at right. 56 degrees south. Number 18. The world's second least wow. corrupt nation. There's so much about the world that I don't know. I, that's what's amazing is like you even talk about space and other planets and stuff. Dude, like there is so much on Earth, so much that you just like the average person doesn't know about. Uh, I'm someone who is like into different things, different countries, uh, geography, maps. And I still don't know a lot. <laughs> so that's always cool when you hear of like an island or a country, territory, whatever it be, uh, that you've never even heard of. It's like, what? That's crazy, dude. There's like a billion ways to like wake up on this planet, right? It, it is wild on how Earth, vast it that's is. New Zealand is in the Southern Hemisphere. The Let second me, uh, least corrupt okay. nation on Earth, that's New Zealand, is in the Southern Hemisphere. I've seen this stat before. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. It's interesting, right? How there's a list of like least corrupt nations. <laughs> uh, the U.S. definitely not on that, on that top 10 list, right? Least corrupt. Um, and then I'm sure a, a lot of nations, you know, that are in the news a lot, um, obviously aren't on this list. Uh, but New Zealand. So what's this mean? Denmark is the least corrupt. 
and Finland and New Zealand are tied, which is interesting, right? Uh, but there you go. Good on the Kiwis. They got a real honest country going on. Yeah, I, I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> the world's most corrupt country, Somalia, also is in the Southern Hemisphere. However, it is an equatorial country, meaning it stretches across both hemispheres. Mm. Number 19. The largest island in the Southern Hemisphere is New Guinea, stretching for a distance oh, wow. of around 786,000 kilometers squared. Only Greenland in the north is a larger island. Yeah, the island thing's weird. I mean... I'm not too passionate about it. I, I still think Australia is like kind of an island, but by technical definition, it's not because it's a continent. But, it, you know, it looks like an island on a map, right? Because it's one landmass and it's, you know, not bordering another big landmass, right? It's surrounded by water. Either way, the other choice is still in the Southern Hemisphere. Number 20. So. At over 60,000 US At dollars, Australia is the richest country in the Southern Hemisphere in terms of GDP per capita. Mm, this ranks them as that. the 15th richest people on the planet. Number That's 21. Cool. Nauru and Tuvalu are the Southern Hemisphere's smallest and least populated countries. Okay, so I've heard of Tuvalu many times. I've not heard of Nauru, I don't think respectively. Excluding the city-states of Vatican City and Monaco, they would mm -hmm. also be the smallest on Earth. Number 22. With the vast majority of humans living in the Northern Hemisphere, this makes the South significantly less polluted. In fact, there are only two countries yeah. within the top 50 most polluted, and both of those are equatorial, meaning they are in both the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. Number 23. So if you want some fresh, clean air, right? Look at that landscape. Fresh, clean air. You can just Take a deep breath, and you're getting the least crap into your um, into your body, into your lungs, right? Go to the Southern Hemisphere. Noted. Both the Northern <laughs> and Southern Hemisphere. Number 23. There isn't a single country in the Southern Hemisphere that has a nuclear weapon. There are an estimated 13,000 really? nuclear weapons on the planet, all of which belong to countries in the Northern Hemisphere. However, Let's see that list. Yeah, U.S. and Russia are way up there, of course. And then some sprinkle throughout. Um, yeah, I guess that's true, right? Because there isn't, there's not a nuke um, program in Australia. I, I sometimes I mix that up because, as you can see here, like the UK, right? They conducted those tests. Uh, there was testing done because, if as you see, UK tested in, uh, in this case, the first test would have been Montebello Islands, Australia. Um, so yeah, there was testing done there. Uh, technically, there was not and is not a nuclear program in Australia. So, yeah, there's none in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, honestly, that just makes it look, uh, you know what? You got clean air. You got you got peace down in the Southern Hemisphere. You guys got it going on. <laughs> Planets, all of which belong to... So weird, uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico test site there. Yeah, so weird that we lived right by countries that. Countries in the Northern Hemisphere. My eyes glowing green However, or what? However, this doesn't go to say <laughs> that countries from the Northern Radiation. Hemisphere don't have some of their missiles in the South. Number 24. Mm -hmm. There are 13 countries in total that are classed as equatorial, meaning they are located uh, on the equator. That's this quite a lot. This also means that their territory stretches into both the northern and southern hemisphere. Indonesia is the most populated of these countries, whilst Brazil is the largest in terms of land size. Yeah. Number 25. Can you think of which country has the shortest name in the world? Well, there are 10. Mm, um, God, that's a good question. That's a good question. I actually don't have any idea. Ten countries around the world with four letters in total. Of those ten countries, just two are located in the Southern Hemisphere. So those are the shortest uh, countries in, in, in terms of letters then? I guess so. Yeah, there's no countries that are only three letters, right? They are Fiji and Peru. Number 26. Wow. On the other hand, the country with the longest name in the Southern Hemisphere, I guarantee you will not get. Don't it know. is the independent and sovereign oh. republic of Kiribati. Now, of course, most there people haven't even heard of this country, let alone know its full name in its entirety. No, sir. And it's an <laughs> equatorial country, meaning it's found in... Wow, it's way over here. ...both hemispheres. Dang. For the country with the longest one-word name that is just in the Southern Hemisphere, I believe that would be Madagascar, mm. at 10 characters long. Number 27. At nearly 69,000 kilometers squared, Lake Victoria That's of huge. Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya is the largest lake in the Southern Hemisphere, and the third largest overall. 
The very top of the lake sits just in the northern hemisphere, so even if we removed this part of the lake, it would still highly likely be the third largest in the world, as the next largest is around 10,000 kilometers squared smaller, number 28. Technically, the world's largest desert exists solely within the southern hemisphere. Oh, the wow. Antarctic is classed as a polar yeah, ice and tundra. That always gets me, that always gets me, yeah. The Antarctic is a desert. Desert. At over 14 million kilometers squared. <sighs> the only country larger than this is Russia. Excluding this desert, the largest desert in the Southern Hemisphere is the Great Australian Desert. Right. right. I mean, look at this. This always, I've shown this probably a, a million times by now. I just can't get over looking at these kinds of maps, right? The to, like topography style maps where you have like the texture. And uh, sometimes they're a little bit exaggerated, but I mean... The point is you get to see, right, what this looks like. This gritty map showing the texture. And Australia is just fascinating looking when you see it like this. Uh, in my opinion, it's so unique. It's got that iconic shape. And then you just have this, this lush greenery on the coast. And then it's just this wild, like, Mars-looking vast it looks you know like a giant desert and of course i know there's multiple deserts and multiple climates that aren't even necessarily full-on deserts in here but the point is it, it is this reddish brown just bizarre looking landmass, right and it, it looks rugged it looks intimidating uh, but I think it looks Excluding cool. Excluding this desert, you know? the largest desert in the Southern Hemisphere is the Great Australian Desert, ranking fourth largest in the world at around 2.7 million kilometers squared, or about the same size as Kazakhstan or Argentina. Number Jeez. 29. At nearly 350,000 kilometers squared and 2,300 kilometers long, the Great Barrier Reef isn't wow. just the largest reef in the Southern Hemisphere, but the largest reef on Earth, as well oh, as yeah. the largest living structure on Earth, stretching yes, from I've about halfway up Australia's east coast coast to the very northeastern tip yeah everyone knows great barrier reef that that is just unbelievable place it really and is finally number 30 according to a poll we ran on the channel a few months ago 20 uh, percent of our 80, viewers 20, live okay. in the southern hemisphere a slightly higher average than the actual population split between the hemispheres interesting well that was really uh really good i mean as i figured uh, i learned a lot like uh, most of those i did not know right there's countries I hadn't even heard of. There's interesting facts I would have never guessed. Some things that stood out to me are like things like extremes, right? All the extremes seem to be mostly in the northern hemisphere, right? So like when it comes to, you know, the biggest buildings, you know, like the highest GDP, the nukes thing, you know, like all these different kind of radical extremes when it, you know, for different stats, they're all in the northern hemisphere. So it is interesting. I suppose it comes down to, you know, the population is just much higher uh, but I don't, I, I can't really think of some other reasons why, you know, all extremes happen in one of them, right? I guess what I'm trying to say is the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, you know, those are the two, like, halves on Earth, right? But when it comes down to, like, stats, it's not half and half. It's not 50-50, right? It's very swayed to one side. So it's just kind of bizarre and interesting when you say it laid out like that. Uh, this is a great video for comments. Um, so, you know, tell me anything, uh, those of you who have gotten to travel much more than me, having gone to the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere, basically, is it really not that big of a deal uh, when you, you know, travel to both? Or is is it interesting? Like, is there something, does it feel different? Uh, do you notice some things that stand out, you know, the Northern versus the Southern? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, what are your opinions? What are your experiences traveling to both? And, uh, of course, which do you prefer? Throw a like on there if you did enjoy this. And, of course, subscribe to be part of this amazing community we do have on this channel. That's about it for this one, y'all. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And until next time, I'll catch you later.